Spring is finally here and summer will soon follow and with the warm weather comes cottage season. So joining us now is Lindsay Charles, a personal injury associate lawyer at McLeish Orlando, to talk about what you need to know when it comes to renting a cottage. Welcome back, Lindsay. Thank you. So what are some tips for owners when renting a cottage? What do we need to look for? Sure. So if you're a cottage owner, I think the first thing that you need to do in deciding whether or not you want to rent your cottage is call your insurance broker and say, hey... I have my cottage, and we've been going through the normal course, but I've decided I want to rent it this summer. So the reason for that is mainly because there's a whole bunch of different insurance policies, and some of them will allow you to rent, some of them won't. And you just want to make sure that your insurance company is aware so that you're protected if something happens to your property, and the person renting your property is protected if they get hurt on your property. So that's kind of the first thing. So legally, just mm-hmm. just for go back one second, if... If I rent a property, is the is the person who rents it to me, I rent it for the summer, they're liable for if something happens to me? Sure. So let, let's back it up a bit. Yeah. So that's kind of step one is calling your insurance adjuster. So when you're renting out your premises, you have a duty to make sure that your premises are reasonably safe for the renter that's on that mm-hmm. property. So that standard is not one of perfection, but it's a reasonableness standard. Mm-hmm. So it kind mm-hmm. of varies in every situation. So yeah, if your property's not provided in a reasonable standard, that kind of falls on you. So another thing that you should do, which usually avoids anyone getting hurt or anything like that, is when the person arrives, you as an owner would have a duty to warn the renter of any dangers or hazards on your property. So the big picture here is to really make sure everyone's safe and having fun on Mm -hmm. your cottage Mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's also kind of the legal requirements, providing your property in a reasonable state of repair and also providing a duty to warn So that's of the dangers and hazards. So dangers and hazards, in my mind, they change because every property is so different. Mm -hmm. But one that I always uh, like to think about is if you have a dock and there's shallow water, so you don't want some kid just running and diving off that dock into two feet of water, right? So that's something that I would want to warn a renter about. Or say you have kind of like a hole in the front of your lawn and you know it's there and everyone that kind of grew up there know it's there, but a renter may not know it's there. So you kind of want to flag those things that may be a hazard to them. Should you then maybe put that on paper so that um, and have them maybe sign it so that that there is some recognition that you did warn them? (laughs) Yeah, no, of course. So another thing, if you're an owner of a property looking to rent is to make sure that you have some sort of comprehensive rental agreement. You can include all kinds of things in there, but some some of them that I've seen that are good are, you know, shallow water, avoid diving off the end of the dock and making sure the renter signs that or um, fire pit in the front. It, you know, don't run across the front of the lawn because there's a fire pit and you don't want anyone to fall in. Things like that Mm -hmm. can be included in the rental agreement and for sure will help to make sure that the the people renting are warned of those dangers and hazards. Let me ask you, if you have a renter and their kids, we were talking about this earlier, I mean, they're having a party and something happens and they have an an accident with a sedu that they rented or whatever, are you in any way liable for that? (laughs) That's a good question. And I think it would depend a lot on the facts, on how you rented it, what you rented to them, Mm -hmm. and what the terms are. it's very broad, and when you have specific things like that, you really need to kind of consult with a lawyer to see what the liability is and where it falls, because there's so many different facts at play. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, I know that whenever we've rented a cottage, people don't include their motorized equipment because of that. I mean, they might include a ca- you know canoes and kayaks and things, but no boats, no sedus, nothing. equipment. But it would, it, it would vary. So what about um, when you are renting? a cottage, what should you be looking for? So for a renter, it's kind of like what I just said for owners, but the flip. So my first step as a renter would would to be make sure you have open lines of communication with the owner of the cottage. You're going to want to review that rental agreement to see if there's any of those clauses about certain dangers, not only just from a legal standpoint, just to make sure that you and your family are safe. Um, And what I would 
think would be prudent is when you arrive at the cottage, you should kind of walk through the property. And if there's any damage, say there's a broken TV, take a picture, send it to the owner so that they know, hey, I didn't break that TV and you don't get a bill at the end of the week. And also just take a tour of the property to see any kind of dangers you may see so that you can warn your family about these kind of potential problems that you may see. Mm -hmm. What about getting references from past? Are you, are you allowed to do that from past renters? Allowed. I would certainly ask if, you know, you're spending a two-week vacation up there. You want to make sure you're going to enjoy it. So mm -hmm. you can always ask the owner for them. A lot of the websites and things where people are renting cottages now already have a bunch of reviews. So those can be helpful, too. I think the quality of the owner and making sure that they'll be able to communicate with you, um, keeping you in the loop is important for sure. And I think I like your idea of the photographs, but not just for equipment, but what about if, if they if the owners said that you caused some damage? So maybe taking a nice video or walk around video of the place before you even as you step foot in it for the first time might yeah, be a good idea. Exactly. So it, those, those videos have timestamps on them. The owner can't say, oh, you took that after the damage was done. It's like, well, no, I arrived at 12 o'clock on Saturday and this is from 12.05. So but it's, it's sort important. of like when you rent a car somewhere yeah. they will take you around the car with a with a form and they'll say yeah there's a nick on the left bumper and there's a mm -hmm. you know and and, yeah. and you sign off on it and if you see anything else you mention it and then you do it again when you bring it back i mean i think that's ideal if the owner does that or whoever's responsible for the property actually takes you around in reality a lot of the times that's not going to happen so you might as well just kind of figure it out on your own and that's a great way to do it by taking any video or pictures of damage that you may see when you arrive so what about things that happen just when you're there? So let's say you were renting a cottage. Let's say you were renting a cottage in the winter and the pipes froze. Well, it wasn't your fault. But, no. But, no. But Unless you turn the heat off. <laughs> Unless you turn the heat yeah. off. But I mean, but, but something like that that happens. I mean, I don't know, the roof leaking or something. You're not, you're not liable for that, are you? As the renter, you yeah. mean? I mean, I wouldn't think so, but you never know. I, I think the the way to kind of look at these things is when you're renting a cottage, you want to make sure you're safe while you're at the premises and the property damage too. I think the owner's got to take a reasonable approach as well. I think it'd be pretty hard to prove that you caused the leak in the roof unless you drilled a hole in. <laughs> yeah. Now, I have I've, um, have a question about what happens if, uh, okay, so we've rented the cottage, everything's fine with the cottage. Um, but we have our children's friends come up and they get they go out kayaking, canoeing, something happens. They're injured on that trip. How do we protect ourselves for our friends? Obviously, our children are covered, but for their friends, what should we be making sure? Is there extra insurance that we should be for looking at for guests, basically? Coverage, that kind of stuff. That's a good question. You know, they've got a lot of things going on there, too, yeah. because you're talking about yourself Injuries. as a super, supervisory role as well. Mm -hmm. So there's it's kind of like a two-part question that's okay. kind of difficult to tackle, mainly because it depends on the age of the children, what you as the person who's supposed to be supervising them um, did or didn't do. Did the owner know that there's going to be additional people there. A lot of the um, rental agreements will delineate certain amount of people that are supposed to be on the property. They may say oh. certain clauses for if someone's under the age of 18. But I think the big takeaway here is that if something happens and you have a rental agreement, someone gets hurt while you're renting the property and something was wrong with the property in your mind or the, the condition of the property caused that, you should probably consult a lawyer because not every rental agreement is going to not allow you to have a lawsuit. Well, so. I'm now at the point where if I rent anything, I'm getting a lawyer to call. <laughs> I'm thinking no. in my mind something like, you know, your your kids are there, their friends are there. They've had a little bit to drink. It's you know, and they're in a canoe and they hit the dock and then they come back and sue because there wasn't a light on the dock or something and say that it was unsafe. Like nobody saw the dock. I mean, that kind of thing. Like, it can get really... Mm. I, I, I can't even imagine trying to sit down and imagine all the possible scenarios that could, could go wrong. Yeah, you guys have a lot of great hypotheticals. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, at the end of the day, review the rental agreement, yeah. communicate with the owner, look with look for any obvious signs of danger or hazard on the property, communicate with your children about that. Um, and if you think that something's happened, someone sustained an injury on the property, you're not sure if it's something that you could potentially sue the the owner for just reach out and talk to a lawyer and see what mm. they think and definitely check with uh, your insurance company because 
there's a possibility if you were the owner of the cottage that they could void the policy if you if they didn't know you were renting it. Potentially, yes. The every insurance policy is different and it depends on the amount you're renting. All sorts of different things come into play. So if you're thinking about renting, call your insurance adjuster and just talk talk it through with them. Another well, thing we can worry about. Yeah. <laughs> apparently we're worries. All right. If you uh, didn't catch all of that, Lindsay has written a blog which is up for us now on what she said talk.com and if you want more information, how do people contact you? Um, you can reach me on our website, so it's McLeishOrlando.com, and my name's Lindsay. Well, she-